Joe Biden facing pressure to cancel student debt, but just exactly whose loans should be forgiven? For more, I want to bring in Young Americans for Liberty spokeswoman Emma Michelle Phillips. Emma, it's been a long time. Great seeing you. So uh, Joe Biden's in a squeeze here. He wants to do 10000 uh, you know, per person or whatever it would be. Uh, AOC, Bernie Sanders, Chuck Schumer, and a whole lot of others are saying, no, go 50000 uh, I think both are wrong, but what are your thoughts? I don't think Biden will be able to go extreme enough on this to ever please AOC and the squad and the socialist types that are cropping up within the Democratic Party. Um, I'm glad that he wants to cap it at 10,000, but I'm also fearful he's going to become a complete pushover um, if and when he takes office in January. So I think I think there's no number that will appease them. They want to cancel rent. They want to cancel mortgages. Ilhan Omar's pushing that right now. So I don't think any number will make them happy. Now, here's the thing. This would be a wealth transfer. Let's call it what it is a wealth transfer from the working class to highly educated people who tend to be in the upper middle class. That is unfair. It's an insult. And frankly, it's making people who made poor financial decisions benefit from people who made good financial decisions. I agree with you a thousand percent. And yet they sell it as something that helps black uh, folks out, Hispanics. I mean, that's what they sell everything, though, whether it's climate change, carbon mm -hmm. emissions, no matter what it is, that's what they sell it on. Uh, 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 but but they, they do, to your point, seem to have that momentum, seem to be able to nudge the party. And this is one of those areas where I, I you know, I just I know Joe Biden's going to say I went for 10. We went with 50. But where does the money go? And you're, who, who ultimately would pay for it? I mean, the loan have been taken out. The money, at the, the, the universities have the money. They put it in their $40 billion endowments. So who ultimately would pay for it? Ultimately, we pay for this through inflation because this is $85 billion in interest that the United States government is never going to be paid back. And, and they were counting on that money. And we know that the government loves to, to go with runaway spending, and that seems like a drop in the bucket. But it's important to call these things out. We need to understand that when you take out a commitment, when you say, I'm going to pay this money back, and you don't, that's a big problem. And, and we're going to have a real serious issue here if young people cannot wrap their minds around around the fact that they need to follow through with their financial commitments. Now, this is personal to me, Charles, because I right. have paid my way through college. I didn't have any help. I had to work odd jobs. I went to community college, and then I went to an online degree, degree program so I could pay my way through. I worked so hard not to take out debt because that was important to me. I, I want other people to have that power and to understand that that's still possible. But when Uncle Sam, as the Fed, is writing these blank checks, telling colleges we will give students loans for tuition no matter how high you raise it, that's a huge problem. It starts with the government reining in this spending, reining in carte blanche for these higher education universities right. and colleges. That's where you could really fix this issue because they're never going to lower costs if there's no competition. Uh, I, uh, I got goosebumps when you said that the way you worked your way through it. Uh, uh, believe me, millions of people agree with you and did the same thing. We thought we were doing the right thing, at least, uh, but maybe not uh, in this new world. Emma, it's been too long. Great seeing you. Thank you, folks. Thank we'll be right back.